today we are going to do a better job at relaying information. So let's see if this works out. Ah, I'm so excited. <sighs> okay, real quick. Today's video, we are talking about Jeannie Mai herself. I am so excited, like I am every other video, but she's one of my favorite celebrities. She is gorgeous. She is confident. She is bold. She has this openness about her. I, it just shows through camera. It just, it radiates her. I love it. So let's get right into it. So today's video is going to be a podcast review on Jeannie Mai's podcast called Hello Honey, and it is called Discovering the Missing Link Between Men and Women. Okay, so if you don't know, Jeannie Mai, she is a host on a show called The Real, which I love that show too. They talk about topics that need to be talked about, and you know I am all about awareness. So I love that show, and they give their honest opinions, and they go back and forth. And she also used to be a makeup artist, and she even now has her own YouTube channel. And I think it's been about a year since she started it. So I will have those linked below. So on this episode, her guest that she talks with, his name is Stephanos. I'm gonna butcher this, but she does a great job. Safandos? Safandos? I think that's it. And he is a relationship expert. And they talk about how men and women have a disconnect. And I love that because naturally I feel like something, something's not right, right? Men and women just think so differently. And he kind of clears the air about some stuff. And he is a relationship expert international speaker he's a coach that specializes in masculinity and femininity and the energies that each one has also sexuality and the inner child healing so like past trauma and stuff that would be in our subconscious that we wouldn't really know about or have thought about and he talks about his purpose and what his purpose here is. And he feels like his purpose is to serve, which I love that. I love talking about, interviewing, reviewing people who just want to help. I think that's amazing. That is what the purpose is, the bigger picture. So he goes over, the, inter the interview starts off with him going over who he is, his background, what he thinks his purpose is, and everything he's kind of all about. So he tells you that what he does is, if he had to sum it up, he tells you that he maps out consciousness and helps people connect to their pain. And even their past, if they need help with something that has happened to them in their past. And he said along this journey of him trying to figure out, um, really hone in on what he wanted to do, he knew that he had to figure out his own past, which I love that because you would think people would be like, oh, obviously if he's trying to help other people, he needs to get his own stuff together. But that's not something you really think of at the forefront, you know, and he covers that. And he talks about how it's helped him. And what's helped him a lot is looking at his own trauma and looking at his past because learning to heal through that has really helped him connect with himself. And he talks about how everything stems from our childhood and how we were raised. Which stay tuned because I have a book review coming out in about two more videos after this one. And it is about the book called The Four Agreements. If you've read that, and if you haven't, watch the video. It's a really good book. Okay, anyways. And then he goes into detail about how healthy talk therapy can be. 
because you can learn more about yourself and what you value and to figure out what you believe in. Like, do you believe in it because you want to believe in it? Or are you telling yourself you want to believe in it because you were taught to believe in it? I'm going to say it again. Do you really believe in it because you believe in it? Or do you believe in it because you were taught to believe in it? It's a huge difference. And from that, you can really see yourself and start to get to know your worth. So I love that. And not only does he talk about talk therapy, which is cognitive therapy, he also talks about the energy that when you give something, you can actually end up storing that energy within your body and you not realize it when we've gone through something traumatic. And so that dense negative energy is within our body. And he talks about, you know, when you've gone through something traumatic, you can really learn how to release that negative energy, which he explains is his modern take on therapy. So a more modern path to connect and heal the mind and keep the mind and body in tune and teach people how to release energy from both mind and body. But I will say this, I do like the like the sequence of this podcast episode because it was easy to follow along. And I think that was the main thing that I liked about it. I like stuff that flows well together that I can follow along easy with. It was pretty cool. So the next part of the video goes into question slash answer part. And so the first question she asked is what is the missing link between women and men? Like what do women need to know and what do men need to know? And he talks about how we now live in a world where the main focus is about to have status in materialistic things or to have a bunch of money. Like that's what we tend to focus on and if you have that, then you've made it. Then you're successful. And he goes on to say, which is a good thing, but when all your focus is on that, it's not a good thing. And it almost becomes hyper obsessive and we obsess over money, the best job, who has the best clothes, who has the best car, who has the most captivating Instagram profile, all of that. Which means we have started to lose that human connection that kind of bonds us. I'm telling you, I was all here for it. I was all here for this man and his advice and his input because he also has um, a bunch of degrees like in psychology and stuff. He goes into all his stuff on the episode. You should listen to it. So because of that, the women are more so likely to look within ourselves and to ask ourselves if we're being true. So because men do not, because of the pressures of society and being raised in different generations, that has to add to it, and definitely culture too. So all these different variables play a part, and so when women grow up and men grow up, it's kind of like we already have our opposing views to it. And then he walks you through a short little timeline story of why he thinks men don't look within. Okay, second question. How can men start to be more self-aware? So he goes into three things that men can do. One, men should have lots of community. So he says, surround yourself with other men. Maybe that you do the same thing. Like you like to play basketball, go play basketball together. You like to play video games, go play video games together. So surround yourself with other men. Reason number two is do something that you normally wouldn't do because he says when you do something challenging or difficult for you, it kind of breeds self-confidence in a way you wouldn't normally receive it in, if that makes sense. So go do something out of your element. And number three, at the end of every single day, ask yourself, how did your day go? 
walk yourself through certain situations and ask yourself about your actions. You know, did you have good intentions? Did you say something the right way? Did you look at somebody in their eyes when they spoke to you to let them know you were listening? Stuff like that. And then this is like one of my favorite parts. Jeannie says, well, how does a man do that and be honest with himself and have honest intentions with that? Because she says she knew men that do that, but they surround themselves with like-minded men who think the same way and feed into each other's ego. And she said that about all three reasons. So he communicates that those three tips only work if A, the man tries something out of the normal and you take him out of his element. And his version of normal obviously will be different. Every man is different. And B, if the man really wants to change and or grow and evolve into new ways, he'll really look at himself and be honest. So I thought that was a really good one. The last question is, what is your message towards women and what should we do on our end? And he goes into having compassion for the man and non-judgment and empathy because that feminine compassion and the feminine energy is to help a man see themselves differently which is very unique but it only works if the woman is doing the same thing for herself so she can't be doing everything for him putting his needs ahead of hers because then she's doing a dishonesty to herself and the whole thing would just really backfire. So you have to be comfortable with yourself and true to yourself in order to be true with someone else or for that person with empathy. So basically making sure she's honoring herself and her needs as well. And then after the question and answer series portion, he ends or she ends the podcast with him answering what he used to think a man was and what defined a man. And it was interesting to hear his perspective on what that looked like. And I won't go into his perspective because again, support the videos. And I will tell you this, he mentions the power of vulnerability and how scared that can be sometimes can be more powerful than what you realize and really help in the whole process and I feel like he opened up a lot into his own experience which was pretty cool to learn about and yeah so that was the end of the episode it's only a 30 minute episode so it wasn't that long go check it out you can YouTube it and I will also link it below anyways so yeah I hope you guys like this review don't forget to go check it out and like comment share and subscribe to my channel and I will see you next week don't mind me it's a little cold so um the jacket stays oh, crap I forgot to wet my beauty blend I'm gonna wet my beauty blend you what I forgot to wet my beauty blend doctor's gonna say you forgot to pee I heard you say wet oh man I just left the camera on <laughs> I can edit it out, though. What? I thought you had to have it. Yeah, no, it's on. <laughs> Did you get what you needed? It wasn't in there. Oh. <laughs> she said it wasn't in there. Okay. All right, that was funny. Teeth check? I think I need my teeth whitened. It was pretty white on camera, though. I like that. Okay, anyways. And a coach who he talks who he talks what <sighs> I need to slow down <laughs> can I even say that word right oh, yeah, yeah. he is a coach that special 
Oh my gosh, I need to get it together. <sighs> See if we can lighten up my red Rudolph nose. <laughs> um, he maps out, maps consciousness. Your consciousness? Yeah, I said that right. Um, I might have to scratch that. When is that book review coming out? Is that coming out after this video? Oh shoot. Are we being quiet? Uh, you're being so quiet. I'm like, I hope they're okay. Yeah. Cognitive. I don't get how one day your brow can be looking bomb and the next you've got a whole different brow. How does that even work? I think this is as good as it's gonna get. What I want to know is how does Bailey Sarian remember all that research she's done when she does her mystery makeup Mondays? I'm starting to think that is a secret power of hers and she has legitimate magic. And then he kind of walks you through a timeline of where I blah, 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 blah. materialist. I just can't talk today. What is happening? Second question. Why? Nope. How? Uh, I need to clean my eyeshadow curler, my lash curler, my eyeshadow curler. I was gonna say mascara curler, but that's not it either. My lash curler. So what he said is you have to communicate that those, he commun, oh Lord. Meet and Peter at the perk. I bet a lot of people don't even know what that's from. And again, if Jeannie Mon sees this video, <laughs> please, that would make my day. It could be a year from now, two years from now. <clears throat> I did write on her channel one time and she wrote back. I was fangirling.